Glorious greetings to all our viewers at home. Welcome again to our New Dawn Conversation. Uh, this is a series we've been doing, uh, learning the principles of the kingdom and how you deal with certain things and certain issues in this kingdom. Fundis, yes. welcome again, Bob. Thank you, My thank name you. is Beganis Kosana. With me, I have Pastor Ntla Antla. Uh, thank you for joining us and we, as we just to rehash a bit on the subject we were talking to, um, I, I think I loved mostly the, the, the book of Acts chapter 2, the scripture that you quoted last time. On the day of Pentecost, all believers were meeting together in one place. Now, because uh, another version says uh, on the day when the day of Pentecost had fully come, yes. they were all in one place in one accord. One accord. Now, the, the, the power, what enables the church to attain a blessing, oh, the yes. blessing of oh, Abraham, yes. is the fact that we, 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 we move, we work as a, as a unit. We all have one mind, one heart, and have the same mission, the same desire, the same purpose. We have the same vision. We don't one have this one vision and another has that other vision. Now you can imagine the head has its own vision, the legs has its own vision, the hands has its own oh, vision. Yes. You know, the disaster in that situation, the, the pressure we are putting in the body because we are trying to, one is trying to do this other thing and the other is trying to do that other thing, the disorder, you know, in, in that body. Now we were looking at all those things and how we are attaining the blessing. We come into possession because the in, an inheritance is one thing, but possessing that inheritance is a, is a, it is a different story yeah. altogether. Now, That's take true. us through, Baba, just like you did last time. Thank you so much, Man Thank of God. You, sir. Um, well, you know, unity is very important, it's very key. Amen. Uh, like what we, we've read, Psalms 1331. Amen. Uh, the normal verse we normally read. Mm. Unity command the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Where there's no unity, there's no blessing of the Lord. If you are in a church where there's a lot of division, that church won't walk in the blessing of the Lord. True, so true, sir. hence we need to strive and fight for oneness. Amen. Not uniformity, but <laughs> oneness. oneness. Yes, that's a difference between the two. <laughs> oneness. Now, yeah. where you've just read the book of Acts, if you if you if you if you read verse forty two, now we said how the Holy Spirit came about. Mm. They were in one place. Not just one in one place, in one accord. And they receive such a greatest blessing ever. Amen. When you read verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship, mm. in the breaking of bread and in prayer. The fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done to the apostle. Now all who believe were together mm. and had all things in common <laughs> and sold their position and goods and divided them among all as as anyone had need mm. so you see when they were united there was no poverty mm. when they were one there was no poverty your needs are my needs mm. remember the, the sevenfold blessings Uti, mm. i bless you so that you can bless you are a conduit mm. you're not a dam where everything come and stop <laughs> the reason why we are, we are a river the blessing comes and then they it flows, it flows. so here we see when they are together, when God places me, the intention is targeting somebody else. That's true. So you, you could see that no one went to bleed hungry. Mm. They, they had everything in common. They were togetherness. Unity, 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 unity. We cannot really emphasize that man of God. Amen. Amen. Now, again, let's look at where there's no unity. First Corinthians chapter 11, the normal verse we read when we take... <laughs> um, Holy Communion. Now, First Corinthians 11, verse 8. Mm. I'll, I'll read from verse 8. Is it verse 18? No, First Corinthians 11, verse 18. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are division amongst you. And in part, I believe it. For there must be, there must also be factions among you. <laughs> that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry, another is drunk. <laughs> what, do you not have house to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God? Shame those who have nothing. And what shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. 
Now, yeah. I know we normally jump to verse 29 where it says, For he who eats and drinks in unworthy manner eats and drinks in judgment to himself. So the unworthy manner here is also the divisions. Mm. You know, I've, I've heard from this most, most preachers when they when they do home, holy communion services, yeah. they, they I think they misinterpret this this verse because yeah. they, they they say the unworthy is the sinners, <laughs> the one who commits a sin. I uh, I believe there's an error in that because when you read clearly, he's he's dating what what's an unworthy man. You know, he's, he's clear on the unworthy manner, but those who are causing divisions, they are eating unworthily. So because they're not discerning. The body. Exactly. The body is united, is a single unit. Exactly. The issue here, you are not discerning the body. <laughs> and not discerning the body, it attracts cases. That's here true. we find that some of them, they are sick now. Mm. Some, they even died. Because they are, despising they are the not body discerning the unit, the body, because the body is supposed to be always intact mm. in oneness. Amen. So, Amen. unity attracts blessing. Division attracts cases. cases. Here, yeah. there's a proof. Yo. I know people say, I'm born again, there are no cases. But the Bible says some are sick. Some are even dead. Because, because they're not despised. discerning the body. They're despising the body. Mm. The body is supposed to be one, united all the time. Mm. So unity is one of the ways we attract the blessing of the Lord. Amen. So Amen. if you're in a church where there's, there's, there's no unity, there's <clears throat> division, try by all means, pray and resolve issues. Unity is key that attracts the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the third one, they had to possess their inheritance in proper relationship to their leadership. Mm. God chain of command. They had to respect that. Now, God will speak to Joshua. Joshua will, will speak to them. There was that respect and understanding of, of the system, of the God system that God will operate. It is true that God can bless you directly from heaven. But in many a time, God uses men. When you read the, the sevenfold, mm. he's saying, I'm going to bless you so that you will be a blessing. Mm. So sometimes God will bless the leader of the church. He becomes a conduit. Oh. Through him, when you honor him, mm. you receive the blessings. Mm. Now, let's read this verse to qualify what I've just said. The normal verse, Matthew chapter 10. From verse 40. I know we have a tendency to dishonor man and think we'll honor God. Now, here, this is what the Lord says. He who receives you, he who receives you receives me. He who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of a disciple, as should I say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Mm. You see now, that proper relationship with your leader, they are placing that God purpose places on, upon the, a leader. Mm. Sometimes just to join a ministry, just to be part of them, yeah. those blessings that falls um, under, that, under that, everyone benefits. <clears throat> so hence here it says, when you receive the man of God, because that man, he's just been sent by God. Yeah. We are not necessarily receiving the man. We are receiving the one who sent them. <laughs> yeah, when you reject them, you're not rejecting the man. You are rejecting the spirit behind the man. Yeah. So that is why here the Bible says, He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet reward. reward. It doesn't talk about God's reward. It simply means those blessings are already been given. given to that particular, could be a prophet, could be an apostle, a teacher. Mm. When you receive the, that gift, that vessel, Amen. we are not just receiving the vessels, we are receiving everything that comes with the vessels. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm. I, I think the failure to recognize the structure that God has placed is, is what's leading to the most detrimental situations we are finding in the body of Christ. Because we, we are failing. I think maybe we need to also clar clarify the fact that we are not worshiping. 
we are honoring. honoring Honor and worship are two different things. You know, to 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 appreciate and acknowledge that this man is sent by God. And because you are doing that, you are playing that role. That is why Jesus, no wonder Jesus is saying, if 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 you come into a city and they do not accept you, dust your feet off and and leave. You know, because he's 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 understanding the principle of honor, the principle of acknowledging that these are not here by themselves, yes. but these are sent by God. Yes. And now he says, and then he says, if they accept you, l- l- release, release your, blessing your blessing in that place. Yes. Now, you do not enforce a blessing. That's no, the thing. No. A blessing is not meant to be enforced, but a blessing is meant to be released and received. That is why he's saying, whoever receives a prophet in the name of, the prophet. of a prophet, yes. you know, he shall receive a prophet's reward. Acknowledging a proper structure that God has placed, not worshiping, acknowledging, yes. honoring that proper structure. You understand you are receiving and you want to partake in that structure. I think one of the reasons why Paul had to discipline the church in Corinth mm-hmm. is because they failed to acknowledge that structure and then they wanted to worship that structure that's why that's why he's saying in chapter three uh uh, uh, another saying i'm of paul another saying i'm of apollos is christ divided among himself uh um, the one you should be you should want to be of is christ not paul Mm. not apollos Mm. acknowledge the structure but do not serve that do not worship rather the structure honor the structure because they are sent by god that is why paul says paul is saying how can they preach unless they are sent yes. you know you need to be sent and when you are sent you are sent with a blessing yes. whoever receives that structure receive the benefits of that structure yes that's true mm. and just to add this also if you look at the the first Corinthians about the Holy Communion, when you're not discerning the body. Mm. There's a structure in the body. Mm. When you disrespect the structure, disrespecting the body, mm. how then can you benefit from, the, from, from it? That body. From that body. No. So, of course, there's abuse <laughs> where now people use this to, to do wrong things. <laughs> but here we are very um, uh, sober people, very balanced people <laughs> who are true. preaching the word as is. As it is. We still need to honor. Honor is honor. You know, here, yeah, just honoring, doing the right things. There's no fasting, there's nothing. You are just walking in the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You enter the good ministry where God is, lives, mm. where there's presence of the Lord. Just by being part of that ministry, mm. there are blessings that comes to your life. Just being part of that. Because now, now another verse that explained it, Philippians chapter 4 from verse 14. I know we normally read this verse out of context <laughs> to suit our agenda. Amen. But let's read and put it into the correct con- context. Amen. Philippians 4 verse 14. Nevertheless, we have done well that you shed in my distress. Hmm. That's Paul, eh? Amen. Now, you, Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you send aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Mm. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. I like verse 19. Normally what we do, we jump straight to verse 19. 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What triggered these blessings? Hmm. They shared with Paul in his distress. They honored him. They were with him. They gave him money when everyone um, forsook Paul. So now, now Paul is saying, just because you have honored me, you have helped me, little did you know that there are blessings that God has given me. By giving to me, now listen to what will happen to you. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This verse, if you take it to context, these, are, these, these blessings are for only those who honor a man of God. They honored 
Paul. Now Paul said, because you've honored me and you thought you were blessing me, you were blessing the Lord. For that reason, God will supply you out of his riches. Oh. So what we do, we disrespect uh, leadership, we disrespect, we dishonor men of God, we, we create division, and then we go to verse 19, we leave the context, and we believe God shall supply all our needs. <laughs> and the trigger there was the honor, and they were working together with the leadership. Mm, I, I love this translation. It says, at the moment, I have all I need, yes. and more I am generously supplied yes. with the gifts you sent me mm. with Aphrodite. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice yes. that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Verse 19, which is what I love. And this same God who takes care of me, the same God who takes care of the structure is placed. Yes. The same God who takes care of the leadership. Yes. Um, let, let's not abuse scripture, you see. Yeah. Let's, let's, let, let's not mistake what God is saying. Yes. The same God who takes care of me, because at this current moment, yeah. I am abounding. Yes. I, I am well taken care of. Mm. The gifts you are giving me mm. are just an extra from God. Mm. And they are a sweet, precious aroma. Amen. They are good to God. Mm. And this very same God mm. who takes care mm -hmm. of me. Yes. This is very key. I, yes. I think the, the, the most precious key we can ever, mm. can ever have. This very same God who takes care of me. Amen. Will then supply you. Yes. You know, yes. because he's taking care of me. Yes. I know what I'm talking about. Yes. I know the God I'm talking about. Mm. And because I know him, mm. I know he will do the same that he has done to me. To me. No. True. And this very same God who mm. takes care of me mm. will supply all your needs mm. from his glorious his riches. Yes. His glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. They are not given to us in any other places no, but in Christ. In Christ. Which, which, which then proves the first point, the point you made that in order to attain these blessings of Abraham, you mm. need first to be in Christ, be in Christ. Because they are not found anywhere else mm. but in Christ. They are in Christ. Mm. Thank you, sir. Wow. Now, I think what is key in all this mm. for me is the, is the background where we started. Amen. To say this was God's idea and God must be involved. God must be part of it. Amen. There's a design, there's a pattern that needs to be followed. Amen. Sometimes the reason why some people maybe they get offended when we talk about prosperity, we preach it wrongly. We, we are coming from the flesh point of view. That's why it, ex it excites many. If you begin to talk about prosperity, they belong to us, but it's, it depends where you're coming from. Amen. Because when God prospers us, it's for the kingdom's sake. Okay. And, he, and he must be involved. Hmm. Where we've seen, he must be leading the way. So people who live in flesh shouldn't have time for God. They also want to access them they end up accessing them using other means Amen. that brings sorrow. Mm. That's why many are not enjoying their blessing. They are working. They and we've yeah. even adopted this worldly terminology. I'm a hustler. <laughs> and it sounds so spiritual that you are doing something great. It sounds catch. <laughs> I'm hustling. <laughs> but if you look at it, there's sorrow in it. They don't sleep. They work 24-7 <laughs> because they are doing it using their own ability because they have to hustle. <laughs> and when God blesses you, of course, you need to claim them. There's some action from you, but there's no sorrow in it. The wicked don't sleep. They toil. They toil. <laughs> and unfortunately, we toil with them because we've adopted the Babylonian way of receiving, accessing these blessings. Yeah. We're doing the same thing they're doing. Uh, we need to be with the Lord. He needs to be directing us. We need to be, our heart, when you talk about this rich man, mm. whose heart was not circumcised, <laughs> why he was offended? Not that Jesus didn't want this man to be rich. Mm. He realized the heart, it's there's something the wrong with the heart. There's no circumcision. <laughs> That's why he was offended. Mm. Some of us, when you say give, we get offended. Mm. Because 
there's something wrong with our mind and our heart. There's no circumcision. Not that God wanted that boy to be poor. He wanted to put him into the right place. To say, you can be rich, but your heart. Your heart. And, and make sure before you attain this, do you have a relationship with the blesser? Mm. I like Paul, go Philippians chapter 4, when he say, that I may know him. And mm. listen what Paul says. She want to know him first. Ut then I may know his resurrection power. Mm. He wants the power, but he doesn't start with the power. He's saying, I want to know him first. Because it's key that we know the mm. blesser. Yes. And by the way, let, let, let me read this verse. I, wa I, I want to show you something. Is it John chapter, first John chapter 3? Um, please, if you have it open, the uh, man of God. First John chapter 3, verse? Verse 2. It reads as follows. The elder to the beloved, oh, I'm spelling, um, pronunciation, J.S., whom I love, truth. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prosper. Mm. Can you read if you've got even a version there? Is it that John? Yeah, that, that John, chapter 2 from verse 1 to verse 3. Mm, to verse 3. Yeah. Dear friends, I hope all is well with you and, and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Holy day. So, w w what is John saying here? He's saying as you prosper materially, mm. make sure spiritually you prosper. you prosper. In other words, John is saying it is illegal to prosper materially while your spirit, <laughs> spirit you are not prospering. Glory. Because the blessing will become your memory. Mm. So he's saying th this must go together. And not, don't leave health behind. It's only sorrow when, when, when God is not there. You'll be prospering, but you'll be sick. Mm. You'll be depressed. Because God is not involved. Mm. And you might not even enjoy whatever wealth you're accumulating. Many are working hard, they don't even enjoy their money. They die, leave them because of, of all other diseases, mm. because of toiling. So what John is saying here, I want these three things to be on par. They must work hand in hand. That is why when someone comes to the church, the first thing you receive is, is work. The first thing you receive is material blessing. I always worry. <laughs> to say this person doesn't know the blesser, but now they're enjoying the blessing. Mm. They are likely to abuse the blessings because those blessings don't belong to them, they're just a conduit. Mm. So, as you prosper, don't, again, don't prosper spiritually and material you. be left behind. So, it must go together, mm. it glorifies the Lord. Imagine spiritually, you're growing. Mm. Material, you are growing, and you are healthy. You are, we, we, healthy wise, you are healthy. There's not, no issues. Then you are enjoying the blessing of the Lord. Amen. I, I think we also need to put a disclaimer on this. Yes. Uh, as soon as a shy. Yeah. <laughs> we are not promoting laziness. No, that's true. We are not promoting laziness. We we are saying it's important to prosper while in Christ. Yes. Because. We are maintained, mm. we are able to better maintain the blessing we attain from Christ. Yes. It will add no sorrow. It will add no sorrow. Amen. <laughs> Just a disclaimer. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Amen. That's true. So I think just to conclude, um, these blessings were never a man's idea. Mm. It was God who brought about these blessings. Amen. That needs to, we need to arm ourselves with that in mind. It's God's initiatives. And it's him who will see to it that we possess them. Amen. So we need to work with him. We need the presence of the Lord. We <coughs> need to prosper spiritually. That is why the word of God, it, it is seek ye first the King. kingdom. Because God is concerned about your spiritual. Because when you find the kingdom, you'll find the principle, you'll get to know how God operates. <coughs> now, once you, you receive that, this blessing will begin to follow you. But what we do, we neglect the spiritual aspect of it. We <laughs> want to follow the blessing. Hence, we chase them. We go all over churches. We are looking for a word, a man who will speak a word so that you can receive the blessing. The blessing are there are yours, but you can access them hmm. just by doing the right thing. Hmm. Amen.
No, Jesus is saying in Matthew 6, so don't worry about these things. Mm. Saying, what will we eat? Yes. What will we drink? Mm. What will we wear? Mm. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Yes. But your heavenly Father yes. already knows all your needs. Mm. Seek the kingdom of God above all else yes. and live righteously. Mm. Live righteously. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's very cool. And live righteously. Yes. <laughs> you know, Bundes, Bundes. and he will give you everything you need. That's true. That is why the Bible says the steps of a righteous man mm. are ordered My by God. the Lord. Sometimes we set, we set ourselves up for failure because we, we are failing to adhere to the word of God. It's mm. The, the, the word of God is very simple and straightforward. Mm. You, 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 it's, it's what God says. We take it, we go with it, we yeah. run with it. So when he says, God knows, he, he knows, he knows that you need, but all you need, seek the kingdom first above all these things and live righteously. Now, because we are seeking the kingdom first, mm -hmm. now God has the opportunity to then ground us into himself. We understand the principles of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. We know that whatever he blesses us with, it's a flow of a river. A you know, river. whatever he blesses us it with, it has us. it has to go. You know, it's 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 a, it has to circulate. Mm -hmm. It it can't stay in one place. So God blesses us so that we bless others. It moves. It's the it's 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 the order of the kingdom. That's the order of the kingdom. It's the order of the kingdom. And where we've just read, men of God, John three, mm. uh, the dead John. Remember, John is praying for them to say they must have all this. When you read verse 3, what if I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testify of the truth that is in you? Mm. <clears throat> Just as you walk in the truth, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. So he didn't just speak about blessings and leave it there. He then emphasized that you need to walk in the truth. In the truth. We are expecting God's blessing and yet we are not walking according to his statutes, which, which makes no sense. In order to enjoy what the king is giving you, you must adhere to the laws of the king. Even Abraham, the man who was promised, he had to <laughs> obey. And, and That's how he realized they made to obey, he had to be obedient. God is giving him a simple order. Yes. He's saying, walk before me yes. and be blameless. Be blameless. Simple and straightforward and I will make your name great. And we want to claim them being disobedient. <laughs> we are saying, no, no, forget about the pattern, the, all what God is saying. Mm. Just because I'm in, a, I'm in a church, I'm a child of God, I will possess them. Then it explains why most of us, we love the Lord. I don't know whether we love or why we're in the churches, but we don't see any, bless. any blessings. Mm. And, and, and God sometimes will, will give you that, that blessing just to call you closer to himself Amen. and sometimes we misinterpret that and think we are still walking in obedience with him we are still Amen. walking righteously before him and it is just calling us closer to him he's trying to win us over win our hearts over Amen. wow what a wait thank you everyone for joining us may the lord bless you and reach us next time god bless you god Amen. Bless you.